Hi, and welcome to this lesson where we're going to be talking about experiments that you can do to investigate respiration using yeast. Okay, so um, this is going to be a pre-recorded lesson, um, but I'm going to upload this video. But there's also going to be other YouTube links that you need to, to, to go away and navigate to during the lesson. So I need you to watch these videos and then come back to this video because I'm going to give you the sort of overall explanation. I'm also attaching the PowerPoint to the assignment so you'll have the links you can follow from that. Um, all right, so let's get a little bit of overview. Here's the textbook page that you're going to be using together with some YouTube videos that I'm linking into this video. Um, so first of all, I'd like you to mark the work that you did last lesson, which was about anaerobic respiration in eukaryotes. I'm going to give you all the answers here uh, so you can pause this video and use this to mark your work on anaerobic respiration in eukaryotes. Okay, so remember that yeast uses ethanol fermentation as one way of respiring uh, anaerobically, but it can also respire aerobically. This is what makes it such a good um, experimental uh, organism. So let's get that. Here is Saccharomyces cerevisiae. It's baker's yeast, excuse me. Here's a diagram of it. Uh, just taken from Wikipedia, so it's a eukaryote, it's a fungi, uh, and there's a diff couple of different types of yeast, but we're going to look at baker's yeast here, uh, and let's just have a little quick look at it. So baker's yeast, and there it is, when you put it in, mix it up in water, you rehydrate the yeast, and eventually you can look at the cells on a microscope slide, at low power, looks like that, tiny little dots everywhere medium power looks like that the dots are getting slightly bigger each one is a yeast cell and if we go to 150 times magnification we can see a bit better now here we're at 400 times magnification so what we can see here is the cells dividing by a process called budding so I'm trying to see if we can spot one ah there's a good one oh so this one here's one which is budding oh no I don't want this thing to go there there we go uh, and here's another one, okay? There's another one as well. So the larger adult cell is there, and then it produces a smaller daughter cell, which is right there, that grows off via a process called budding. If you'd like extra detail, you can navigate to this uh, link here. It talks about uh, sort of the process of mitosis in, in a yeast cell, which is slightly different than mitosis in let's say an animal cell, because of this budding. The cell doesn't divide evenly in the middle. It kind of forms a tiny little offshoot cell that then splits off from the parent. And we can see a lot of that going on here. So one of the good things about um, oops, um, a Saccharomyces cere cerevisiae, and I'm going to just write this down here, is it is what is called a um, facultative anaerobe. And that means that it can respire aerobically or not. It can respire aerobically. Or anaerobically. Oops, my pen's going all funny here. So, the experiment that you're going to be kind of um, researching is described in your textbook page. And what I'd like you to do is to print out this sheet if you have the ability. If not, you could just um, make a kind of flowchart of the experiment. So the experiment um, starts up here. So this is yeast. Write that there. Uh, we put it in cider, there's some, we do some stuff, we divide it up into two different things, and we investigate it, we test it, and then from down here, move up to here, and then we can count some yeast cells, and then you can do some calculations and finally figure out something, okay? All this is described, uh, oops, in this textbook page, um, where it says investigation one right here, and investigation two, okay? So what I'd like you to do for your main task is, Read through the textbook page and uh, sort of label all of this area. 
Um, and then when you get to here, which is the hemocytometer, I'll write that up here. This is using a hemocytometer. Um, it is in the textbook, but then you might also want to watch these three videos, okay? Setup of it, the, the cytometer itself, and the calculations. You might not have to watch all of the full video for each one, but have a little look in those videos and try and find the relevant info. Um, and these videos are actually about brewing because people who brew alcohol need to count how much yeast there is in their beer, for example. Then there's a little calculation um, to do here. Use the learning tip box to help you with this. It kind of gives you a bit of uh, info. Do the calculations. And then for limitations in the method, um, it's to, I'll give you a bit of a clue. It's to do with live versus dead cells. Uh, and if you watch this video here, it will suggest an improvement to the method that could counteract that limitation. Okay, so once you've done that whole flow chart, um, then you can watch this next bit of the video, okay? So just pause the video, do the flow chart, navigate to those links, uh, and then come back to this video once you've done that. It should probably take you maybe 10, 15, 20, 20 even minutes, okay? All right, so you're coming back, so hopefully you've watched all that stuff. Here's the overview. Um, so, first of all, an investigation to yeast reproduction in aerobic versus anaerobic conditions. Second of all, cider is used as a source of glucose. Let me get rid of that. I've got three minutes to finish this video. <clears throat> it also contains a low dose of alcohol. Then yeast can be grown in either... Uh, with oxygen or without oxygen in two different beakers. So one is sealed airtight and one is just sealed with a piece of kind of a tin foil that stops contaminants getting in but still allows oxygen to get in. Then we can investigate uh, a week later. Samples are taken from both beakers, little um, fluid samples with a pipette, and we can investigate them using a hemocytometer. Now, a hemocytometer is normally used to count blood cells, that's why it's called a hemocytometer, but we can also use it to count yeast cells. So then up here, um, having watched these videos, hopefully you'll be able to say how it works, but basically it has a very small and fixed volume and we use it together with a microscope to count the cells in a given volume to estimate the number of cells per milliliter. Um, okay, so, and then I want you to work out those calculations there if you haven't done so already. Okay, um, I'm going to give you the answer to those calculations uh, and this final bit here next lesson, but what I'd also like you to do is to answer the summary questions here please. And then as it's the last lesson of the week, I would like you, when you're handing in the work, to please scan all the work from that this week. So that's the mitochondria lesson, um, the anaerobic respiration lesson, and this yeast lesson. Scan it all as one PDF document, please, and upload it to this assignment so I can just have a little look at your three lessons from this week. Okay? All right. Thanks very much. And uh, we'll go through that and I'll see you on Monday. Bye-bye.